Hello and welcome. In today's video, we are going over some of the fastest cars to use for the Le Mans WTC 700. This is one of the few money grinding events in Grand Turismo 7. Now, this event in particular actually has a 30 minute time limit. So, you might think to yourself, what's the point of using the fastest car? Well, it's because if you use the fastest car, you can get such a large lead over the opponents. You can reach the end of the event. You can literally sit at the finish line and just wait for that 30 minute time to run out. It's really efficient and it's guaranteed a win. So if you want to find out what some of the best cars are to use for other events just like this one, hit that subscribe button. Now all of these lap times were set post update 1.31. And to just show you how fast these cars actually are, we're gonna set a base lap time in a car that is honestly used quite a lot around the circuit. And that is the Red Bull X Junior. Now I understand why people use a Red Bull X Junior. It's because it's cheap and it's an easy win. It's a dirt easy method to actually complete this event. That's that's like the only reason to use it. When it comes to power and performance, this car is not fast at all. On the straightaways, you might see yourself on the hardest difficulty and the AI actually pull away from you. The car has no straight line speed and on a circuit like Le Mans, that is what you need. You can't, this car shines in the corners, okay, fine, it makes up its time there. But just because of how long the straightaway is on Le Mans, the Red Bull X Junior really struggles and that's why the lap times that this car is able to set is around the 4 minute 20 mark and we need to keep in mind that there was a lap time set in the dry the track was in perfect condition and it sets a 4 minute 20 lap now once rain comes into play you see that lap time increased to almost 4 minutes and 50 seconds so that lap time really just increases and your car goes a whole lot slower so now with our benchmark set, it's time to go and look at our first fastest car. So to start off our list, we are using the iconic Mazda 787B. Now this vehicle is purchasable from the legendary dealership, which means if it isn't there, well, you're just gonna have to wait for it to come back. Now this car is a group one race vehicle. So that means this car is gonna be extremely light on fuel and extremely powerful. Now. Before the test I ran all of the vehicles on fuel map level 1. That way I knew okay we're gonna run at the fastest laps possible. So I did this with the Red Bull and I'm doing this with the other cars. Now the fastest lap we were able to get was around the 4 minute mark. The quickest being a 4 minutes and 3 second lap. That is now with the circuit being completely dry. Now when we see the rain begin to fall we see the lap times increase to a 4 minute 40 second mark. Now, the way the lap times actually increase just depends on how severe the rain actually is. So, what I love about using the 787B is because it has great power down the straightaways, it is extremely light on fuel, which means I only needed to go into refuel at the end of lap 5. And that says a lot because I was using this vehicle on fuel map level 1. With most other vehicles, even the other cars on this list, you can get nowhere near that level of fuel efficiency. So, for that reason, I love using a Mazda 787B and it is one of the fastest cars to use for the WTC 700. Next up, we have the Aston Martin DP100 Vision GT. Now this car is available to you whenever you want because it is purchasable from Brand Central for a solid 1 million credits. Now you will make their money back using this car around this event. This car is actually insanely fast but it is only fast if you use a manual transmission. Yes you cannot play using an automatic transmission because somehow you have to short shift this car in order for it to be fast. Now, when you are looking at the rev range you have to shift before six and a half thousand rpm because with this car it's almost like it has a medium rpm turbocharger so to optimize this car's performance we're gonna have to short shift in order for you to be in the boost range at all times and trust me this car can reach upwards of 340 kilometers per hour 
coming down the main straightaways. So this car is incredibly fast down the straightaways. It has good brakes as well and it's actually decent around the corners. So in a nutshell, this car could be the fastest car to use for this event. This car is capable of setting lap times around the 3 minute 50 second mark when the circuit is completely dry, which means that is over 10 seconds faster than the Mazda 787B. And yes, the only downfall now compared to a Mazda 787B is the fact that this car has to be refueled twice. Now this is a must in order to complete the event, the car has to go twice. Now, the other downfall compared to 787B is with using the manual transmission. If you're not accustomed to it, then you might actually miss, mess up the shifts and this will slow your lap time down. However, it's very unlikely that you'll sit more than a 4 minute lap if the circuit is completely dry. However, in the wet, the car will see you run lap times around the 4 minute 20 second mark. With you setting a 4 minute 20 second lap in the rain, this is still the fastest lap that the Red Bull X Junior was able to do in the dry. So that really just shows you how fast the Aston Martin is compared to the Red Bull Junior. Next up is an honorable mention because yes this car is incredibly fast but it is incredibly hard to drive. So the consistency of you being able to set fast lap times really varies on just you, the car, weather, it's just not a constant thing. So this is the Honda RA272 and this car is incredibly powerful when it comes to straight lines but extremely tricky when it comes to cornering because this car has absolutely no downforce so when you put it into a corner you don't know whether this car is going to understeer, oversteer if the brakes are going to be good enough to slow down because sometimes the brakes are rather sketchy and you don't know okay is it going to brake and slow me down enough or am I going to go with the circuit but what's crazy about this little Honda is the fact that it can do over 340 kilometers per hour coming down the main straightaways and that is quite a scary experience considering the fact that you don't know whether the car is going to slow down enough to get you around the corners but i knew i had to put this car on the list because i was able to set lap times around the four minute mark it sets lap times averaging around the same time as a mazda 787b now the only reason it isn't on this top 3 list of the fastest cars is because of how inconsistent the car is. With the Mazda 787B you know okay when it comes to cornering, how the car is going to handle, how it's going to perform. However with the Honda RA272 this car is so all over the place. One lap you can set sub 4 minutes, the next lap you're doing a 4 minute 20 second run. This car is really all over the place. Yes, it is a whole lot of fun, but just because of how inconsistent it is and not really user friendly, well, this car isn't really gonna make on the list. But if you feel like you can actually handle and control this vehicle, well, by all means, go ahead. And lastly, the fastest car I was able to go around the circuit with was the Suzuki Escoro Pikes Peak Special. This car was insanely fast, insanely powerful. Now this car is available in the legendary dealership for currently what is 1.7 million. Now this car, because it's in the legendary dealership, you can't pick it up whenever you want. So if it's not there, you're just gonna have to wait for it to return. But when it returns, you need to pick this vehicle up. This car is insanely fast, insanely powerful. The car is lightweight, produces over a thousand horsepower, and the amount of downforce it has has you going around every corner with absolute ease. And the braking system on this car is out of this world. This car, as you can see, look at how it is going past the AI. This car makes this event look like an absolute cakewalk 
This car travels over 340 kilometers per hour and it feels like it wants to keep on going. This car is truly unstoppable, especially when it comes to this event. So this was the fastest car I was able to use. It is very closely related to the Aston Martin DP100 when it comes to lap times. The fastest lap time I was able to sit in this particular race was a 3 minute and 42 second lap. However, the big downfall when it comes to using the Suzuki is of course fuel economy. Now with you using the vehicle on fuel map level 1, you are going to have to refuel after every second lap. Which means that's the possibility of you refueling 3 times. For a lot of people that is way too much, but when you keep in mind that even when you have to go into the pits and come out, you still set a lap time of 4 minutes and 5 seconds. That means this car, even with completing a fuel stop, and you know in this game it takes about 3.5 years to complete a fuel stop, still sets a lap time faster than the Red Bull X Jr. on its fastest lap. The Suzuki Escuadra is honestly insanely overpowered, it's insanely fast and the fact that it has the ability to set a full lap and include a pit stop and be almost a 4 minute run is just absolutely insane. Now all of the cars that I have shown you can do 8 laps of this event because that's how fast they are compared to any other vehicle. Most of them can only do 7 within the 30 minutes. All of the cars that I have mentioned that are the fastest can complete this event with 8 laps and I personally have completed 8 laps in each of these cars. So now in conclusion, the Mazda 787B, extremely fast, extremely light on fuel. So if you don't want to be going into the pits, well, that is your answer. The Mazda 787B as well as the Nissan R92CP have very similar lap time so if you don't have one you can use the other. Now when it comes to the Aston Martin Vision GT that car is insanely fast when you use the manual transmission. If you don't want to use manual transmission don't even think about using the Aston Martin. However that car can be faster than the Suzuki if you actually take your time practice with that vehicle you will honestly surprise yourself as to how fast that Aston Martin actually is. Then, for honestly, let's just say noob friendliness, that is going to be the Suzuki Escuadra. Yes, you are going to have to visit the pits after every second lap, but just because of how insanely fast the vehicle is, that won't even play a part. The car is just going to be so overpowered and it is guaranteed that this is going to be one of the fastest cars you will ever use for this event. So, if you do go on to enjoy this video and you want to see more Grand Turismo 7 content like this, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.